All right then, so a lot of the gameplay logic and a lot of the UI is done, but we're not there yet. There are a few more things that we need to do, and the first one of those things I want to focus on is the animations of the words and the letters. So right now, when we type in a word and then submit that word, we see that word immediately colorized without any transition or animation. In contrast, on the Wordle site, we can see that when we enter a new guess, those tiles animate from one state to the other by rotating around the X axis. So we're going to try and implement this rotation effect for the tiles in this lesson. So the way we're going to do this is by using a keyframes animation, which we're going to make at the bottom of the CSS file. And then we're going to apply that keyframes animation to the tiles in the rows. So let's make this by saying at keyframes and then I'm going to call the animation flip, but you can call it whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. And by the way, if you want to learn more about CSS animations, then I've got a whole series dedicated to them. So if any of this goes over your head, or even if you just want to learn a bit more about CSS animations, then definitely check out that series. I'll leave a link to that below this video. Anyway, there's going to be different stages in this animation. It's going to have a starting state, and an ending state. But in between, it's also going to have a couple of other states. So I'm going to make these by using percentages, which is something we can do in keyframes animations. So to start, we'll have 0% for the starting state. And for the ending state, it's going to be 100%. So this percentage kind of represents at what stage we are through the animation. 0 the start, 100 the end. And what we need to do now is put the CSS properties and values we want the animation to have at the start in these curly braces and the CSS properties and values we want the animation to have at the end in these curly braces. But also, I'm going to add two more stages of the animation. One of them is going to be at 45% just before the midway point, And then the other one is going to be at 55% just after the midway point. All right. So we've got four stages in total. We're going to animate through. And the CSS properties and values are going to be slightly different in these stages. All right, so let's start by animating the rotation property. So this is the first property I want to animate, and it's going to be the transform property. And the value of that, to begin with, is going to be rotate x, and it's going to be zero, meaning don't animate this at all, or rather don't rotate this at all. And it's rotate x because we're rotating around the x axis. So this means to begin with, the rotation of the tile around the x-axis should be zero degrees, right? No rotation. Then, when it gets to 45% of the way through the animation, I want this rotation value to be at 90 degrees. And this means that it's essentially going to lie flat on the screen, pretty much invisible. So, I also want the rotation value to be the same, 90 degrees, at the 55% stage as well. So between 45% and 55%, it's not actually going to change at all. It's just going to lie flat for a split second. And then finally, at 100%, I want it to go back to zero degrees, to its original position. And this rotation animation is kind of going to make it look like the tiles are flipping over. So this isn't done yet by a long stretch, but I do want to preview this now. And to do that, I need to apply this keyframes animation to the squares when they get a color, because that's when they need to flip, right? When they've been colorized. So let's come to these color classes right here and apply the animation to each one of them. So we can just say animation is flip. I want it to take 0.5 seconds to complete the animation. The easing function should be ease to make it look more natural. And finally, at the end, we say forwards so that it stays in the final state of the animation. And now all I can do is just copy this line and I want to paste it in the other two color classes as well. So we're applying this animation to all three colors, right? And once we've done that, we can preview this in a browser. All right, so in the browser, let's see if this works. The correct answer is spade. So let's go for something like pants, press enter, and you can see we get that rotation animation. But there is a problem with this, and that is that they're all rotating the very same time. Now, I want there to be a slight delay from each letter. So let's implement that as well. So to do this, we need to add the animation delay property to each element, to each div in the row. I remember there's five of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste a few styles from my repo. You can do the same if you want. And all this does is say, look, get me the div inside a row, which is the nth child too. 
So the second div and apply an animation delay of 0.2 seconds to that div. So the first child is not going to have a delay. That happens straight away. That's going to animate to begin with. And then after 0.2 seconds, the second div, the second square, that's going to animate as well. And then the third one, we have a delay of 0.4 seconds, which means 0.2 seconds after this one. And then 0.6 and then 0.8 for the fifth one. Okay, so now each square has an extra little delay to the previous one. So let's save this now and see if this looks a bit better. All right, so the solution is blame. Let's type in something like clams. I'm going to press enter and now each tile should rotate one after the other with a 0.2 second delay between each one. And it does. Okay, so that looks a bit better, but there is a problem with this. Watch what happens. I'm going to say blame now and what happens is they get the new color first of all so these are all going to be green and then it starts to rotate one after the other and that looks a bit daft watch this you can see they get the green color first and they still rotate what i'd like to do is keep the background white to begin with and then it's going to go to green when it flips to the other side and also the text is going to be black to begin with because black looks better here if i do this again but when we hit enter, after the halfway point, when it starts to rotate back in, I want to make it white again, okay? So let's try implementing this functionality. So we need to add the color animations to each tile so that each tile starts off as a white background and then it animates to either gray, green, or yellow. So in the keyframes at 0%, we're gonna specify that the background property is white to begin with. But we also want to say that the border color is going to be dark gray because that's also going to animate to the correct color as well and that's either going to go to yellow green or gray and these two properties are going to be exactly the same at 45 percent as well so i can just copy those and paste them in so that means between zero percent and 45 percent until the tile has kind of flipped out of the screen we're not actually animating the color so for all that portion of the animation it's going to appear white at the background okay then at 55 percent when the tile starts to animate back in we want the background color and the border at that point to be the correct color and border color for that letter but how do we know what that color is going to be because depending on the letter it could be gray yellow or green so we can't hard code any of those values in here because it could be any one of them but what we can do is we can change the properties defined up on the color classes to be variables instead. And the way we do that is by adding two dashes in front of them. So I can do that for the background, but also the border color. And I can do that for every single color class. And when we do this, we're actually not applying these properties to the classes anymore. Instead, we're just defining these as variables that can be used within the scope of these classes and we can reference those variables down in the keyframes animation. So at 55%, I could say that the background is gonna be a variable. And I do that by using the var function. And inside that function, we declare which variable to use. So in our case, that's gonna be double dash background. And dependent on the class of the div that's currently animating, that's gonna either be yellow, green or gray, one of those three colors defined in those classes as variables, all right? Cool, so now I need to say the same for the border color as well. That needs to be a variable. And we also need to pass in the border color variable to say what color we want this to be. And again, that's gonna be either yellow, gray or green, dependent on the class of the tile that's animating. All right, so these two properties are gonna be exactly the same at 100% at the end of the animation. So we can just copy and paste them into that final stage as well. And then one more quick thing, we need to make the text color at the final stage be white because that looks better than gray on the colored backgrounds. So I'm just gonna add that color property in as well and make it white, okay? so. Let's try this out. Oh, and by the way, that also needs to be for the 55% stage as well. So not just the end one, but the 55% uh, stage as well, when it already has those colored backgrounds. All right, so let's save this now and try it out in a browser. All right then, so now we've got a blank board and this is the solution Ninja. So what I'm gonna do is just something like 
jails and press enter they should animate correctly now and that looks a lot better i'm going to try another guess ninja and they should all go green yep voila looks pretty good so that's the first step i wanted to take in this kind of animation approach the next one is when we're actually entering letters into the grid down here because as you can see when i do it there's no animation and when we do it over here there is an animation so we're going to sort that out in the next lesson